Hi everyone! Today we'll be going over the second part in the series on creating a dApp. During part 1, we've explored how to view data on the blockchain. Today we will be deploying a Spark contract and implementing the transfer button. We'll first navigate to the send transfer form component and first start by putting in this code. This gives us the skeletal structure of what we will be importing. The ABI allows us to interact with the methods in the smart contract. The contract address points to the location of the contract. You need both the ABI and the contract address in order to interact with the contract. Let's create both. We would like to create the actual contract we would like our dApp to interact with. To do that, we need to install Truffle. Truffle is a platform we can use in order to deploy our contracts to the blockchain. We will also install the Ganache CLI. This is a simple tool to create a local blockchain on your computer. Create the contract folder and navigate to it. Truffle init. You should see three folders. Contracts, Migrations, and Testing. Contracts is the folder where you place all of your source code for making the smart contracts. Migrations is where you put all of the deployment specifications of the contract. In our case, we'll be using it to deploy the contract to the blockchain. Test is where you put all of your test cases to test your smart contracts before you deploy them. Let's start by creating our contract. Create a new file within the contracts folder and name it transaction.soul. Paragma Solidity defines the compiler version of Solidity that this contract will work with. The caret symbol means that any version between 0.5.5 and before 0.6 will be accepted. The transfer funds function gets created with the receiver address as the parameter. The address data type means that we are specifying that an address will be passed. The payable data type means that this address will have additional function members that we need in order to send Ethereum to it, namely the send function and the transfer function. We will be using the transfer function. The external function modifier means that this function can only be called outside of the smart contract. The payable function modifier allows the function to receive Ethereum. The receiver will be transferred the amount specified by the global message dot value value. Of course, this code does have its flaws, and we will be expanding it for the next part. For now, this will do. In order to make sure that we are using the correct compiler version, we would want to change to a version that is compatible with 0.5.5. We can do this within the truffle config file. Let's change the compiler version with the currently generated truffle config dot js with the version 0.5.5. Next, we would want to specify our deployment instructions or migrations. So let's create a new file named to underscore deploy underscore transaction dot js. We'll copy the previous migration. The reason why we would want to label it with a number in the front is because the migrations will be run from the top down. And this allows you to see which migration failed and it is purely for readability. And change the variables to transaction. And there we go. This migration specifies that the transaction contract will be deployed. Going back to truffle config, let's uncomment the development network. Note the host and port. It's important that this is the same as the Ganache instance. Now that we have our contract and deployment set up, let's start our local blockchain with Ganache CLI. Now let's deploy our contract on our local blockchain using Truffle. I did make a bit of an error here. I typed in Truffle Migrate Development when instead I should have typed in Truffle Migrate Dash Dash Network Development. Fortunately, Truffle by default knows to connect to the development network. When this command is started, it is doing multiple things. First, is that Truffle checks if you have compiled all of the contracts. We have not. So it compiles the contracts and creates a build folder to put the contract data, such as the bytecode and the ABI. When all of the contracts have been successfully compiled, Truffle begins the deployment process. 
it deploys all of the migrations alphabetically. The first contract is deployed, which is the migrations contract. This contract tracks all of the deployments you have made for each contract and makes sure that you do not accidentally do any duplicate deployments. Then, our transaction contract is deployed. This is the one we want the address for. Once that's done, we can see that both the migrations contract and the transaction contract have been successfully compiled and deployed. Make sure to copy this address. You will need it in order to interact with the contract you have just deployed. Go to the send transfer form and paste the contract into the contract address variable. Now we need the ABI. As previously mentioned, Truffle generates a file after the contract is compiled located in the build folder. We need the ABI or application binary interface in order to interact with the smart contract. If we navigate over to the contracts folder and go to the build folder, we can see that there's a transaction.json. We'll copy the ABI and create a new folder in the SRC folder called ABI and add a file called transaction.js. We'll make sure to export const this. I'm using the prettier extension in order to automatically format this. I'd highly recommend using it as it saves a whole lot of time in order to correctly format any of the pasted JSON. Once that's done, navigate to the send transfer form component and import abi forward slash transaction dot js. Next is we would want to create a send transfer function in order to send a transfer. This code calls the transfer funds function that was put in the smart contract. We provide the receiver address as a parameter. Within the code, we specify the sender and the actual value that is sent. The transaction hash is returned if the transaction went through successfully. Otherwise, we will display the error. Finally, we need to update our Portis instance in order to interact with the blockchain that our contract is located on. In this case, it is our Ganache CLI blockchain, or our local blockchain. Navigate to SRC services web3.js. We would now like to create a JSON object within the Portis instance. In this case, we're specifying the node URL which is located on our local host network at port 8545 and our chain ID of one. Oops, looks like I made a mistake by removing my DAP ID. You need it in order to use your Portis DAP on any network. If you accidentally delete your DAP ID, you can always navigate to the Portis website to your developer dashboard. Select your DAP and copy the ID. Now that everything is set up for our code portion, let's import our generated Ganache CLI account to Portis. We can do this by copying the mnemonic phrase. After we copied the mnemonic, let's log into Portis and import by the mnemonic phrase. If you import by the mnemonic, it will always be the first address that is imported. We can see that this address starts with 0x4ca. If we go back to Ganache, we can see that it is the first account that was imported. Going back to the application, as you can see, we've imported the wallet successfully and are now able to access our account. Let's send some Ethereum to another account on our local network. Oh no, it appears that the transfer button is not working. Oh, I know. This is because although we created the method send transfer, we did not call it when the button was pressed. Let's change that now. Go back to the send transfer form and copy the check balance button on click call and paste that into the send transfer button and rename the function name to send transfer. Let's test it out. We'll copy an address that we'd like to send our test ether to, paste that in here, transfer, 
and success. We got a transaction hash as a result. And if we check the balance, then we can see that the Ethereum has been successfully transferred. Checking the local network, we can see that the transaction has gone through as well. Now that everything is working on our local network, let's deploy this application to the Robson test network. First, we'd want to deploy the contract to the Robson testnet. We'll be using Infura in order to do this. After creating an account, create a new Infura project. Let's name it transaction. And copy the Robson testnet address. Paste the address into the truffle config. We also see that there are variables here, namely the mnemonic. Uncomment the fs, the mnemonic, and the truffle wallet provider. In order to deploy your contract on the Robson testnet or main Ethereum network, you need your mnemonic phrase. This phrase is important to keep secret because whoever knows your mnemonic phrase has full control over your account. This is why it's important to keep it separate from your config file, because if you're not careful, you will accidentally expose your mnemonic. In this case, create the .secret file in your contract folder. In order to retrieve your mnemonic from your Portis wallet, go to your wallet, select the address that you previously used to get some Robson testnet Ethereum during part one of this tutorial. Make sure to enable your test networks in order to verify that you have your Robson test Ethereum on your account. If you don't have any, you won't be able to deploy your contract on the network. Once you verify that the address has a balance, click on export wallet, then click on your Ethereum wallet. You should have two options, either the private key or the mnemonic. Choose the mnemonic. Once you are done, go back to the secret file and paste your mnemonic into the file and save it. Going back to the Truffle config, make sure to install the NPM package of Truffle Wallet Provider. Then deploy the contract with Truffle Migrate Robson. Oops, looks like I made another error. I incorrectly specified the network parameter. Good thing the migrations caught that error. Otherwise, I would have to pay additional network fees for that accidental deployment to the wrong network. Make sure to put dash dash network before the network name you would like to deploy on. So in this case, truffle migrate dash dash network Robson. Copy the address that comes out of this and paste it into the place where we put the contract address in the send transfer form. We are now pointing to our deployed contract on the Robson test network. If we go back to our application, we can see that the Ethereum balance is zero. That's because Portis is still checking our test network. Let's change the Portis instance to point to the Robson network. Going back to the web3.js, we'll now delete this object and put in Robson in place of it. Going back to our application, we can see that we now have a balance for our address. Let's grab another address that belongs to us. In this case, let's grab an address from our test network. Let's send some ether to the ninth address, which is at index eight. All right, let's send 0.25 ether. Looks like Portis detected that we are sending 0.25 ether, and we'll confirm this. Great, it generated a hash. Let's copy it and look it up on Etherscan. As you can see, our transaction went through, and we can see the contract that the transaction has gone through as well. Let's go back to our application and check our balances again. Cool, it updated. Thanks for watching part two. In part three, we will extend the functionality of this DAP to include transaction signing capabilities with the help of a gas relay.